What's up you guys, this is Devin from Project Sax and I'm back. Today we're going to be talking about contemporary artists. Now I know, I know you guys, you hate me talking about contemporary artists. Why? Because as a jazz musician, what, where I come from, people are like, well if you don't know this, then you're not a real jazz musician. Or if you don't listen to this guy, you're not a real jazz musician. Well, I want to shed some light on the contemporary and modern artists, whether it's jazz, whether it's pop, whether it's hip hop, whether it's R and B, whether it's this, that, and the other. Now, uh, I remember one of my favorite artists in the world, Cassette Michelle, had told me that uh, where she comes from, if you don't know a, a C minor seven chord, then you're not a real musician. You know, there's certain things that people say to you know kind of really focus on the traditional and theory of music and the traditional artists of music. If you don't know. Uh, Coltrane, you're not a real musician, or you don't know Bach, you're not a real musician, you know, and I, I think that a lot of people, since they're so concerned about traditionalism as musicians, especially educators, but no flack towards educators, but I think that generally we kind of focus on the legends more than the legends of today. Uh, so, I say all of that to say really look into who's good now now i mean now now i'm not saying forget sonny rollins or forget coltrane or forget miles davis or forget uh gillespie whatever your feel is i'm not saying forget the legend i'm not saying forget bach and mozart because i will sit and play uh moonlit uh sonata all day but you know that's uh is that Mo i think that's Mo mozart but and um, a few at least. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I love, I love the classics. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, and um, uh, uh, and a guy in, uh, in D minor. Um, I believe that's another classical musician. A partita, excuse me. Uh, uh, is the is the is the song. I think it has many other names. But anyway, uh, if you if you go like so, okay, say you're a musician and you are training you know in school and you're you know you, you'll you see your I guess your music teacher put a, a poster of Jimi Hendrix or you'll see your music teacher put up a poster of this that and the other and you'll be like well you know what I don't know who this guy is you know you might be early 90s 80s baby I don't know 70s baby I don't know well 70s you're probably not in school now but you might be a 90s baby you might be a 2000 baby you know, because it's 2013, so you might be 13 right now. So, so I'm just saying, you old enough to actually conceive, you know, what's this musician, what has he done, and what has he produced, um, wise, or well, produced uh, to, to make the, um, the world of music better. Now, uh, I'm not going to tell you who you should like. That's not what I'm here to do today. I am here to shed some light on both ends of the spectrum, whether it's contemporary or modern uh, versus the, the, the traditional or um, legendary musicians of the past. Now, whether it's music, whether it's singing, whether it, music is music in my opinion. It's not really a genre, even though I yield myself to jazz or yield myself more to the smooth jazz genre, it's, uh, it's more of a general thing for me because I can just pick up and play around with anything, you know, anything I hear on the radio, anything at all. So, I say that again, once again, to say that please don't, don't ostracize uh, a contemporary artist, you know, or don't say, oh, because this artist is uh, new and they don't have as much experience that they're not good. That's wrong. Uh, I'm a firm believer that um, as people, we don't really realize what we have until this long. So appreciate your artists, you know. Appreciate if you like, let's for instance, Beyonce, because she did the super sexy halftime show with Caddy Rodriguez <laughs> and the other girls who were on stage. If you like Beyonce, like her. Don't be ashamed. And just because you're a musician and you're learning. It doesn't mean that you have to stop and oh, what am I, do what am I doing? What am I doing? I shouldn't be liking this person, or or just because you don't know something about music theory doesn't mean you can't learn it. And just relax and like what you like, okay? If you like all contemporary artists, it's not bad. Now I would encourage you to get into some uh, traditional, uh, legendary artists who have already made the music game good, you know. But if 
you like, or if you like more traditional, if you like, you know, these artists more than those artists, you know, traditional more than the new contemporary artists, then it's, it's fine. Just know that liking one does not make you more inferior as a musician. And now that's that's the feel that I've been getting when I see educators of higher, you know, of higher status, you know, the higher educators who really have to do research and go back to the majors. Now, now if you're a music major, now it it's imperative to learn both ends of the spectrum, the old and new artists. It's kind of no choice if you want to be a good musician if you're dedicating your life to this. But I'm just telling you guys, don't. Don't forget about the people who are in front of you. I, I see now, now, now. Don't, don't. <laughs> let me, let me, let me explain this a little bit more. I see the people who like the traditional artists more than the contemporary artists. That's why I say, look at the artists that are in front of you. What are they actually doing? You know, and look at them and don't just ostracize them because oh she does this or she lip sings that or she hasn't really provided or he hasn't provided anything because he's new. No. Things like my friend Marcus Anderson said, things have changed. Music has changed, you know, and, and we were in uh, at my high school and he was doing a performance from my high school and he was uh, doing a mini backstage performance for some people and they were like, can you play Kenny G? Can you do this? Can you do this? Well, they didn't say Kenny G, but they, you know, if you're playing a saxophone song and you hear it on movies, more likely it's Kenny G, uh, something that Kenny G has played. So, like, can you do this? And it was like, yeah. And he played it for him. And he was like, well, jazz used to sound like this, but now it sounds like this. And music has changed, and we should really accept the fact that music has changed. And I think, I believe what he says. I believe exactly what he says. Now, that's not to make light of the fact of the old musicians because I do like the old musicians. I do listen to Tri Park. I do listen to Coltrane. I do listen to them. And even the ones who do bebop like traditionalism today um, or traditionalist in this area, in, in this era, excuse me, it's, it's all, it's all it's just a big melting pot of music really. And you should just appreciate, you know, artists for who they are and what they do, whether it's old or new. So this is Devin, and I um, really appreciate these artists, and I wish you good sound, and I'm signing off, but for future, for Project SAC, we're going to be um, doing a lot of other things, trying to get you guys free lessons, trying to get you guys more episodes out. Trust me, I'm working on them, but uploading is really hard. <laughs> so uh, this is Devin once again, I'm signing off, signing off wishing you good sound.